I'm wishing everyone well. This is the case of the Idaho quadruple murders. May the four victims rest in peace. May justice be served. Condolence to their families. This is for entertainment purpose only. I like to start by trying to figure out the timelines of the couple Zana and Eaton. What happened to the couple between 9.45 to 1.45 is unknown. The police said that they were at the Sigma Chi fraternity party between 8 to 9. That doesn't make sense either. Let's do some maths here. 8 to 9 if they were in the party. Why is the police asking for 9.45? What happened to the 45 minutes too? They allegedly came home at 1.45. We don't have anyone who can confirm that. There's certain things that I do not talk in my channel and I do not pay attention to. One of the examples are when people talk about Steve Congalves or Congalves. Kaylee is father. I think people need to be more mindful, respectful to the four victims, his parents and families. They're grieving, they're suffering as a mental health counselor. I know what they're going to. What's important is what happened to these four students and why. What was the motive? Who did it? Let's stick to the facts of the case. Even if you are speculating, let us do it in a mindful way. The parents are watching us, they're grieving, and they don't need this nonsense. There's so many other things that we can talk about instead of speculating things that are not important. Steve isn't part of the timeline. Steve is in the university. He wasn't running the university. He expected his daughter and the other four students, the other four victims to be safe under the university campus. There was a lot that could have been done to prevent this horrific situation by the university itself. The police have been in these houses not only in 1122 King Road, in many other houses because of the party. The, the parties were going on for many hours, many days of the week. They could have put an end to it. We've heard some footages from Linda Lane, which I honestly do not speak about it in my channel because from the second I saw it, I believe that there could be some truth in it, but mostly you can see those are tampered additive recordings, which I have nothing and no interest in putting in my channel. But what I found interesting about the Linda Lane footage is that some part of it could be true. If it's true, what we hear about Eton and Zana and all the yelling that could be really possible because what happened to these two victims is crucial. Why was the Sigma Chi fraternity under the microscope? Being under the microscope means you're in, under investigation, allegedly. That's the way I see it. The Sigma Chi Fraternity said they don't have cameras, so they can't see who's going in and out. Where were those four figures, five figures running from? And where were they running to? Most likely to the Sigma Chi. Anna Carnoral and Ethan Chapin for nearly five hours the night that they and two others were brutally stabbed to death. That is a question that police in Moscow, Idaho are asking themselves and the public. And the answer to that question may help them catch the person responsible for this quadruple homicide. Zana 
and Ethan, who were boyfriend and girlfriend, attended a party together hours before they were to be murdered on November 13th at Ethan's fraternity Sigma Chi. They were seen at this Sigma Chi house around 8 or 9 o'clock at night, but police believe they got home about 1.45 a.m., so that's a large chunk of time. Now, the murders are thought to have taken place between 3 or 4 a.m. What's really strange here is not a single person who attended this big frat party reported seeing the couple after 9 p.m. They didn't pop up in any social media videos or photos or any surveillance videos. It's also important to note that this house doesn't have any security cameras outside. So far, authorities have gotten more than 5,000 tips about this case, and over 1,000 photos and images have been sent to the FBI. But there's nothing in them so far to indicate where these two were for almost five hours. What time did they actually leave the Sigma Chi house? Where did they go after? What route did they take? Did they walk? Did they get a ride? Did they take an Uber? The answers to all of these questions could uncover a crucial piece of evidence that could help in solving this case. There's some speculation that Zana and Ethan simply went back to the house early to take advantage of the fact that none of the other roommates were there, so they had it to themselves. Zana's mom thinks they may have gone to a bar, but there isn't any current evidence to support that theory, so I'm not sure where she's getting it. At any rate, the cops want the public's help. If you know where they were, if you've got photos with them in the background, please submit a tip to Moscow PD. We need to keep in mind that the four victims were not together that night. So this could be two separate targets. The Sigma Chi boys know exactly what happened to this couple, allegedly, because they were at the Sigma Chi. Why don't, why doesn't the Sigma Chi boys talk and come up front? Don't they owe that to Eaton and Zana? Let's go back to the 4chan post because I believe that is crucial in this case. Apparently that night of the murders, E and Lot got into a fight at SX and E said Lot had shrivel PLLS trigger warning from roids, steroids. X was talking shit too. Lot has long standing beef with E and apparently M2, the smaddy. Barry and Lot are but buddies, who talked about murder fantasies before. Also something about Barry being E, a suitor, that's eaten, and not doing well with it. So, shrivel balls comment, trigger the roid rage in Loach, and his little twink sidekick carried out their long-standing fantasy together. This is at least what I gathered from the frat, frat, frat and an fraternity. Number one, person doing the wet work and up to three people on the lookout. Isn't that strange? Did we see four figures running? Hmm, fat beef and jealousy and Zana perhaps. The one guy, Barry, his parents own a professional cleaning service. Is that how the cleanup happened, allegedly? The poster claims to even know where the knife is. Wow. It all checks out so far. Barry seems to be quite the incel. And people say that Brian Koberg is the incel. No one's guilty until proven guilty. It all checks out so far. Barry seems to be the quite the incel. He's only in the frat to boost the GPA. He was also Eaton tutor. Between the people with law enforcement and the people in the background of the body cam footage, that is about half a dozen people. Those are the figures running. The importance is they may have witnessed 
something unbeknownst to them. They have either witnessed or they were allegedly in the crime itself. The body cam is, the body cam is stamped 3.12 a.m. Police have previously maintained that they believe the murders took place between 3 and 4 in the morning. Just like I always believed. And if the murder's trigger warning was between 3 to 4 that morning, that would prove that BK wasn't even there. BK was spotted driving the first time at 3.25, but he did not get off his car. Allegedly, he came back at 5 past 4. So that discludes him. Let's continue. Ido Murders, convicted killer arrested a man from the university stabbing. According to law enforcement. Convicted killer arrested a man from the university stabbing. According to law enforcement. When timelines change, everything else changes. Pay attention to that. We have the 4chan posters here. The first one says, I have it on good authority. Cousin is a cop in a nearby town, but called in to help in Moscow once school started back up. Apparently, the investigation is looking directly, I repeat, directly at the Sigma Chi frat party. Eaton and Zana attended, attended from 8 to 9 that night. So, they say, I have it in good authority. Cousin is a cop in a nearby town, but called in to help in Moscow. One school started back up. Apparently, the investigation is looking directly in the Sigma Chi Fried Party. Eaton and Zana attended from 8 to 9 that night. So after all, the Sigma Chi boys allegedly aren't such good boys, according to Walt's obsession. He did not have any update on the timeline after they left. That's between 9 to 1.45. But did say... It looks like the investigation is horning into the two suspects. Horning into the two suspects from the frat that night. And an update should publicly name them by the end of the week. That didn't happen. They went to court Brian Koberger and said. Nobody knows if Brian Koberger is involved. If he participated in this or if he's totally innocent. Stemming from an argument that night. Oh, the argument was about David and his steroids, allegedly. Now that the world knows David, is that what you are hiding? Allegedly, what happened to the couple? Downstairs, survivors could hear two males from Maijing to the room above them, figured it was an after party. They locked the doors and went to bed. When they discovered them in the morning, about 30 minutes before the 911 call, they called their friends at Sigma to come over, who in turn called the police. It's right across the street. And for whatever reason, they believed it was people from the Sigma upstairs around 2.15 that night. Let me repeat this. This person is saying that downstairs, survivors could hear two males rummaging through the room above them. Figured it was an after party. Makes sense. Because guys, do you all remember what we heard that DM said? She opened her door and she said, keep it quiet. Keep it down. I'm trying to sleep. Those are the two guys running. Allegedly. So downstairs survivors called. They heard two males rummaging to the room above them. 
figured it was an after party, locked the doors and went to bed. So that's a crime itself. If they heard that, and we've heard that in Banfield, Ashley told us about that on the news channel, that Dylan thought it was a party upstairs and she said to keep it quiet. But let's not forget, DM heard and saw things. So she knew what was going on, allegedly. Back door was left to open, one dead in bed, the other blocking the room's door with their body. Mm -hmm. And then we have both saw obsession telling us that Eaton was found in the bed. Eaton was blocking the door clearly. We were there many times. Police just updated FBI is recreating. They are not looking into the activities that night. Shouldn't they be looking into all the activities that night? Only the murders. How can you solve a murder if you don't look into the activities? That's new for me. Strange. Which to me suggests something went on. Definitely. Why aren't the FBI and the detectives looking into all the activities that night? Why aren't they looking into all the timelines that night? Why aren't they looking into all the suspicious behavior that night? Everyone was ruled out quickly. Back door was left open. One dead in bed, the other blocking the room with their body. Police just updated their FBI to retaliate. They are now looking into activities that night, only the murders, which to me suggests something went on. Sorry guys, I don't have my glasses on. Police just are okay, read that. Also didn't want to release profile they created as it would cause undue fear in the community. Greek life. So the suspect allegedly was from Greek life. Then it says upstairs, locks to be the case. Never relax around ro rotted upper wigger zoomery. So dirty South Lodge did it and Roglin Jack was in it on it. And you can read the words. I don't want to say that. T-I-T-T-I-S was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Maddie, Madison was in bed. Yes, except Roglin Jack was not in on it. It was schizo. C and T Berry and Dirty South Lodge. Hmm, that's interesting because I was actually thinking about it while I was researching. I was actually thinking about it. Where was Maddie's boyfriend that night? He seems to be awfully quiet. Did he know what they were planning? Because they said. He's going to pay, play his part well. He's going to act like the grieving boyfriend for Maddie. So clearly, there was two targets. One target was for the couple from Sigma Chai or Sigma Kai. They said Kaylee was at the wrong place at the wrong time. She is in bed. She's sleeping near her best friend Maddie. And that wasn't supposed to happen according to the Sigma Chi is planned. So all the rummaging that was happening upstairs, the people that were running upstairs were from the Sigma Chi that DM was selling to keep it down. It's so clear to see. I've been saying this for five months and now people have started catching on making clips about the Sigma Chi boys. When I used to talk about the Sigma Chi boys, people used to actually tell me, you have no evidence, stop talking about them. But it's good now that people are catching up because the Banfield, the Grub Truck, many creators have said those are just innocent boys 
outside drunk and all. I don't believe that. Everything that night was pre-planned. They staged it, they cleansed the place up, allegedly. That's what I believe. Because we don't even know if BF and DM was actually there that night. They could be texting each other from different places. DM, his boyfriend Quinn was there that night. He was seen in Idaho, Moscow. Moscow. And I wonder, I wonder really where Hunter was. Not Hunter Johnson, who called 911, but Hunter Eaton's brother. Stacey Chapin, Eaton's mother, wrote this on Facebook in the beginning of the case.